Hello, uh, my name is Tom uh, from Playframe and this is my series of tutorials about how to make a mixed media piece in Tilt Brush. And what I mean by um, mixed media is by adding not just the Tilt Brush brushes and the effect that you get in VR Tilt Brush, which I'll explain about in a minute, but also to bring real world objects into that space using a system we call photogrammetry or photo scanning. Uh, in a moment, we'll be going into VR, and you'll see, I'll give you a brief introduction about how Tilt Brush works, and show you several different stages. This is Polly. It's at polly.google.com, and like many uh, Google services, you can log into it with your Gmail account. Any Gmail account you'll be able to use to log in here, and then it could appear as one of the apps here next to Docs, Sheets, Slides, Gmail, YouTube, all the Google services. Polly is one of their lesser well-known ones, which is all about sharing 3D models and specifically Tilt Brush. Uh, so you can explore these in 3D if you've got a VR system yourself, but you can also view them in 3D using uh, the web portal that Polly has within it, which actually is a 3D engine that you can zoom in around with your mouse. It's quite cool to look at it through this. It's even better to see it actually in VR. Um, that's much better than anything I've ever done in it. I'm a technologist rather than an artist. But to show you some of the things that we've been uploading in our workshops, uh, here's an example of quite a good one. That is uh, a, uh, it has lots of different brushworks in there, but included in there, here in the background, are some plasticine trees that were made during the workshop. We scanned them and then he put them into the painting there as some of the uh, structure that's going on around there, including that little guy who's trapped in the trees just there. That's basically what Polly is. You'll need to log into that if you want to upload your models. These are some of the plasticine models that we've uploaded to our Polly that we'll then be able to download into Tilt Brush in a minute. I'll see you in VR now. I'm in uh, Tilt Brush right now. Uh, I've got my VR headset on and I'm holding these two controllers. Now there are lots of different VR headsets that you might use to access this application. The One of the most common ones is actually the Oculus Rift, which uh, is not what I'm on today. I'm actually on the Valve Index, which uses the Steam VR system. But a lot of the principles I'm going to be using at are exactly the same, no matter which version of Tilt Brush you're in. So if the controllers look a little bit different in the version you might be using, that's OK. Uh, usually it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be, a diff it, it's going to be the hands gripping and the triggers that are going to be the main thing you're going to be using. Here, this is the intro space. There's a lovely tree. It's basically a demo environment that they've painted for you. Uh, I'm though going to create a new sketch. So on my right hand, I've got the pointer, which it says point to interact. And I'm going to use the trigger to actually interact with those things. So I pointed it with this and then I pull the trigger as almost like a mouse click. Think of it like that. This hand though is actually the menu hand. So it's all to do with, this is where your palette will be here. You'll notice that there's a feature sketchy and you can see them actually on, these are ones from Polly. And I can also see my sketches that I've uploaded either on this computer or ones that I've got on Polly. And if you want to sign into your own Poly account, you can do that here, and then it'll take you to, you'll have to go back to the desktop or within the browser on the Oculus Quest to actually log in. But once you're in Tilt Brush, all that goes away and you've got a nice blank canvas. And when I say canvas, I actually mean infinite landscape to some hills in the background that you can't ever get to. But it's a very, very, very large space. Um, but this square is the center where you actually start. Uh, this is your pointer and it gives you a really nice tool to start with. It gives you a light tool, which is a bit like drawing a lightsaber in the middle of space. So I'm going to pull the trigger with on my brush hand and that leaves a trail behind where my hand has moved. And that's left a, f that is actually floating in 3D space. So if with room scale VR, which allows me to walk around a little bit, I can actually walk to the side and to the left of that object and, it's, and it feels like it's really there in front of me. I can't actually touch it. It doesn't have a physical presence. Obviously, it's, it's a picture still. But that's almost the most a magical moment in, in VR. Now, there are lots of different brushes you can choose from. On this hand, this is the palette space. So we have uh, 
different panels here. You have a brush panel, you have a color panel, and you have a tools panel. Uh, the brush panel has lots of different brushes on it. It starts you with the fancy effects one because obviously this is demoed quite a lot with a lot of people's first experience in VR. So being able to make a light, say like a light tool in midair or like a big fire, animated fire or embers or smoke or this was the most magical one, I think, snow and throw snow all around you, which is truly something quite amazing. That's where it starts. However, if you get rid of all that using the undo button, you can see that I've got on my controller just there. Press all that, press that, and it will get rid of all the brushes that I've made recently. And to the left of that, you've got more traditional paint, which allows you to do all different uh, effects, markers, flat ones. And then going this way, you get more complicated ones like uh, the ability to actually make large physical things or they call them hulls in this or a, a disco like kind of a morphing effect but those are the brushes and obviously you can then change the color of what actually you're doing that brush and it'll affect it and it'll appear different depending on what the brush is so i've chosen a red there and then obviously i can change the brightness of that color using this bar on the side so the color there and the brightness here so that's brushes colors and now tools tools are the more complicated one now i'm switching between them using this little thumbstick here so the thumbstick on the pat on the brush hand allows me to turn the palettes round. but you can still you can usually just move your wrist if you prefer to grab it from different perspectives the thumbstick on this size actually increases and decreases the size of the brush. So that's a that will be a very thick one like this. But if I go really small, it's almost like a little tiny bit of wire. Let's get rid of all that. Undo all those. Or maybe what we'll do is the first tool, which is erase. So this doesn't hold the trigger, doesn't do anything except that it sort of spins a red thing. But what that means is it's going to delete anything it touches and suck it away from the universe. That's what that is. Then you've got dropper, which obviously allows you to select the color that's already done. Recolor. These are all pretty simple. Cameras. Teleporting, which is useful. So um, in room scale VR, you will come up against actual physical boundaries because the room that you're in has only so much space that you can walk around in. So what you might some, sometimes need to do is take a step back and then teleport forward to actually get to the object that you can walk to in the space. Uh, then we've got the mirror tool, the straight edge tool. I'll use the straight edge tool just quickly to show you that that allows you to do completely straight lines, which can be quite nice. Um, I'm just going to quickly make a, uh, a structure here because I want to teach you something now. So this is something that I've made. Then we can use the select tool. Now this is a really important tool specifically when we're going to be dealing with objects that will be moving around when we're talking about importing uh, plasticine real world type things. The select tool is quite complex. It has actually lots of uh, extra complexity down here but we don't really worry about that too much. All I want you to know is you, if you hold the trigger it's a bit like delete but it doesn't delete the things it means that it groups them into a selection. So if I hold that trigger down and pass my hand over all those things you'll see they've all got an outline around them now that means that they are selected and what that means is that I can use the grip you see I've got a grip here and in um, the quest it's a little button on the Oculus Rift and the Quest, it's an actual little button. But on this one, it's an actual, you literally just squeeze your hands on the controller to actually grip. If I put my hand over those objects and now grip them, I can actually move those brushes around, which is very useful for like, you make something and then you realize it's in the wrong place, you can select it and then move it to somewhere else. Or maybe you can say, actually, you know what, I want loads of those. So I'm going to press this button here, which means I can copy. So if I'm gripping it and then I hold the button, I can actually leave a copy of where that thing was behind. And I can do that again multiple times. And that's made three of those weird things that I've constructed. Um, whenever you've gripped anything in your hand, and this includes tool panels and stuff, I'll explain like that. If you're ever holding something in your hand and you just want to get rid of it and delete it, instead of using delete or undo, you can just flip it with your wrist. 
Now, I work with a lot of teenagers, and uh, there's a meme involving the word yeet, and they particularly like uh, saying yeeting things away. So I often say that. Just if you don't want it, just yeet it away, and it disappears, which is quite useful. Um, that's the select tool, and it's really, really useful. It also allows you to do... Um, resizing, which means that if you grab it with one hand and then bring your other hand up to it so that it overlaps and then grip, you actually then have control over the size of it. And if I move my hands out, I make it bigger. If I move my hands together, it makes it smaller. And that's an important principle, except we're going to reverse it now because it's actually how we change the whole size of the world. So not holding anything, doesn't matter what tool I've got in my hand, but if I use, if I grip with both hands, this box comes up and tells me how big I am. If I move my hands together, it starts shrinking the whole world, which conversely effectively means that I am getting bigger. So now I'm the size of a dinosaur, and those little things down there are what I made when I was human size. However, I might want to make myself smaller, in which case I can drag myself down back to human size. And I'm, what I'm actually doing is I'm basically stretching the world out, if you imagine it like that. I can actually make myself the size of a squirrel, which is much, much smaller. Now, one of the weird things that happens with this is that your floor becomes disconnected to where your feet are. So you feel like you're floating high up. Um, can be a bit of a problem, um, but you can, if you want, move, your, move the whole thing down by gripping and then moving your hands up. Um, of course, if you do it the size of a squirrel, it's going to take a long time. So you might want to make yourself bigger and then move up. And then if I want to put myself as a squirrel actually on the floor, I almost need to do that and then put the floor there. That That is me the size of a squirrel and those things up there that I built. Um, but I might want to go back to normal human size. If I want to go back to normal human size, I just grab one grip or both grips doesn't really matter but the this button now turns into a little circle with a little man uh face in it which means that will reset me to normal human size in the middle of my space so if you end up teleported far over towards the hills or you find yourself too big and out of place you can always do that to get yourself back to this center position center of the tilt brush universe um some of the other tools here uh are quite cool you can change your environment you can have a uh, snowy environment with a snowman you can have um, you can change the lighting effect you can change the color of the light so I've made it all green now um, might want to actually put it back to normal light otherwise the colors gonna be very weird and you can eat that away uh, you can change the backdrop if you want to to customize your skybox these guides are very useful. They allow you to create circles that you can then, when you make a brush, it actually sticks to the sphere or the square, meaning that you get these perfect circular shapes or square shapes, which can be very useful if you want to make something that looks real rather than hand done. However, um, you can just get rid of them and there's no need to use them if you don't want to. Um, and then finally, I will come to camp. I won't use camera paths because that's a new feature. But finally, we have the one that says poly library. So that's pushed out this extra menu that I can use my grip to grab and then I can move it around. It means if I want to get rid of it, I can yeet it away. Talking of which, I'm going to yeet away that and I'm going to yeet away that. I can always get them back by pressing these buttons here. So this uh, allows you to access your models. Now, uh, if I want to access my models in Poly, I'm going to need to log in. Uh, but if I want to access these ones, I can. These are ones that you have default access to. Um, and all that means is that you press the trigger and it pulls it into your world. And there you are. I have now a VR headset that I can choose to move and make big enough and put on that snowman. How cool is that? Um, to get to the ones that we've got in Poly, though, I'm going to need to sign in. So I'm going to press this button here. It's going to ask me to sign in. Oh, there is an option to use Sketchfab, but um, we're not going to use that today. We're just going to use Google, and we're going to sign in. Now, it says, in this version, it says, take off your headset. But I'm just now going to skip back to the desktop to show you logging in. And here we are. Just uh, just going to, it's it's already found that I have a Google account, and I just need to click myself there and say yes, Tilt Brush wants to use your Google account, that's fine. This is done many times. It's interesting because it hasn't logged in. And then it says, put your headset back on to return to Tilt Brush and continue creating. 
back in Tilt Brush now, you'll see the same page where it says your models. Instead of having signed into Tilt Brush, it actually has some of the models I've uploaded. So for example, this amazing model created by someone out of Plasticine, which is like the old 90s character called Morph, we scanned and I uploaded to Poly. And I show you how to do that in the next video. But here we are, and it's basically very similar to this object in Poly. So I can move it around however I like. I can grab it, and I can, and if I use the select tool, I can grab it and I can copy it. I can have lots of morphs if I wanted to. I can make him bigger. There you are. It's like a whole morph family. Well, okay, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I will now implore you to watch the next one to see how we actually create photogrammetry models that we can then put into Blender and upload to Poly so that you can make your own mixed media tilt brush pieces. Thank you very much. Bye.